this video, we will revisit the double cone model, a toy model to examine learning dynamics and singular statistical models. From there, we will propose to use stratifolds and generalization of smooth manifolds to describe the parameter space of such singular statistical models and use the resolution of stratifolds to speed up the convergence and avoid attractor behavior near the singularity. Let's start with defining the double cone model. We consider a Gaussian distribution with unit variance, such that the coordinate system of the parameters spans over the means. By restricting the means to be on the surface of a double cone, we define a family of Gaussian distributions as the cone model M. In the case of k equals 3, we can furthermore reparameterize the model from a 3D Euclidean space to a 2D polar coordinate space, such that C is now the distance from the origin and theta the orientation of the cone. The singularity is located at the origin where C equals zero. To define the learning dynamics, we start from the log likelihood and then we can derive updates for stochastic gradient descent and natural gradient descent. For our first experiment, we consider the following case. The initialization of the parameters and the true parameterization are on the same cone as illustrated in figure one. On the left hand side, we see a top view on the cone. The blue dots show the initializations and the green cross gives the true parameterization. On the right side, we will see the loss curves where solid lines show stochastic gradient descent and dotted lines show natural gradient descent. Let's observe how the learning trajectories behave. For stochastic gradient descent, shown in solid lines, we observe an attractor behavior near the singularity, resulting in a loss plateau. On the other hand, we see that natural gradient descent escapes this loss plateau. This brings up the question, why do we need to study ways to avoid singularities if natural gradient descent seems to avoid this attractor behavior? We can build a very simple example where natural gradient descent fails. In contrast to earlier, we now consider that the initialization of the parameters and the true parameterization are on two different cones. We see here the initialization on one cone on the left and the true parameterization on the second cone on the right. Again, let's look at the learning trajectories. If the natural gradient descent does not update through the singularity, the parameters get stuck on the first cone. This can be explained by the film no longer being positive definite at the singularity. Starting from these experiments, we were in the following proposed to use stratifolds in statistical modeling. Why do we need this? Let's consider again the double cone model. If we look at the singularity at the apex of the cone, we see that there is no unique tangent plane at this point, which means that the parameter space is no longer a smooth manifold. So how can we model this parameter space? For this purpose, we will consider stratifolds, a generalization of smooth manifolds, a topological space S together with a natural decomposition into smooth manifolds given by an algebra C. For the decomposition, we will consider that each subspace is given by the dimensionality of the respective tension space. And the stratifold then again is given by the disjoint union of those subspaces. Together by the intuition of the idea, let's consider an example an algebraic variety given by x times y equals zero. We can decompose this into a zero-dimensional manifold at the origin and all parts away from the origin. With a better understanding of the general concept of stratifolds, we can now apply this to the double cone model. Here we are interested in two main ideas. We start with the descriptive element. How does the stratifold for a double cone model look like? From there, we consider the further steps. How does the resolution of the double cone model look like? And how does learning dynamics change on the resolution? A closer look at the first point. We again start with the definition of the double cone. From there, we define the zero set, a zero dimensional smooth manifold at the origin. Later, this will give us one of the subsets of the stratifold. In the second step, we define the part away from the origin. For that, we define the epsilon enclosing ball 
around the origin as the epsilon. And we see that the intersection of the algebraic variety and the epsilon enclosing board is part of the double cone. Over the intersection with the boundary of the enclosing board, we get the boundary on the surface given by the algebraic variety, such that the restriction on the algebraic variety without the zero set has no critical values. From there, we can define W as part of the double cone structure that is away from the singularity. Bringing all parts together, we get the zero dimensional manifold at the singularity as one subset of the stratifold and W as defined before as the second part. The disjoint union gives the stratifold. As we saw now, stratifolds give us a tool to describe the parameter space of specific singular statistical models. But we can go one step further. Resolution of a stratifold, which gives us a smooth manifold approximation of the not smooth parameter space of a singular statistical model. We start with the general definition of a resolution. Important to note here is that in this case, we only consider the resolution of isolated singularities of algebraic varieties. Such a structure is given when all but the zero and top stratum are empty. For the resolution by P from S to S hat, we impose the following. S hat is a smooth manifold. This is the property that makes it interesting for us, since that this means that the surface resulting from the resolution does no longer have any singularities. The mapping P is a proper morphism. The restriction of P to the inverse is a different morphism onto the top stratum. The inverse applied on the top stratum is dense in the smooth manifold given by the resolution. If we now apply this to the case of the double cone model, we get a non-optimal resolution given by a hyperboloid of two sheets and an optimal resolution on hyperboloid of one sheet. For the final part, we look at learning dynamics of the optimal resolution. We again start by reparameterizing the parameter surface onto a polar coordinate system. From there, we get the log likelihood, stochastic gradient descent, and natural gradient descent. We recollect the two main problems that we had with our initial experiments. Stochastic gradient descent experiences an attractor behavior near the singularity and natural gradient descent degenerates at the singularity. Let's look first at this case, where we compare stochastic gradient descent on the double cone given by solid lines and stochastic gradient descent on the resolution of the stratifold given by dotted lines. We see that the attractor behavior and the resulting loss plateau is mostly avoided if we perform the update on the resolution of the double cone. For our second experiment, we want to look at natural gradient descent again. Previously, we observed that the inverse Fisher information matrix degenerates at the singularity when the initialization and the true parameterization are on different cones. We now compare natural gradient descent on the double cone and on the resolution. On the resolution, we now see that the Fisher information matrix does not longer degenerate at the singularity since we work on a smooth manifold approximation. Finally, we can conclude that stochastic gradient descent exhibits plateau phenomena. Natural gradient descent avoids this plateau but cannot cross the point singularity of the double cone model. Finally, stochastic gradient descent on the stratifold resolution avoids this plateau behavior and ensures that the Fisher information matrix is no longer degenerate for natural gradient.